very broad terms, there's pediatric scoliosis and adult scoliosis. Uh, in the pediatric group, the most common patients we see are termed idiopathic, which means we don't know the true cause of the scoliosis. It's probably a combination of genetic and environmental factors. The most common age group that we see patients is between 11 and 18. Girls are more affected than boys. And some of these curvatures will go on to need surgical intervention. Some will just be monitored. Patients may be braced for a period of time until skeletal maturity. In the adult population, we see two types. The patients who haven't been treated as an adolescent idiopathic curvature, and the patients who've actually had what we call de novo degenerative scoliosis, which is just wear and tear, which can also cause the same lateral curvature of the spine that happens in the pediatric population. The main aim of scoliosis surgery for a patient is to correct their curvature. We need to, of course, make sure that surgery is safer, but also that actually it's done in a minimally invasive way. On occasions, we can actually do motion preserving surgery, but that's really for the younger age group, possibly between the ages of four and 10. Essentially, we're trying to guide the growth to make sure that we don't actually have to fuse a patient too early. In the past, we've put growth rods into the spine to try to lengthen the spine sequentially as the young child grows. And we've been able to do that remotely now with magnetic technology. In addition, we've actually now started to do a technique called tethering, which is to essentially stunt the growth by putting implants on the long side of a curvature to allow the shorter side of a curve to catch up and therefore to normalize the spine and potentially give a cure for the patients. Some of these patients, of course, will need to go on to have a definitive fusion. In all types of surgery, both pediatric and adult, spinal navigation, so computer-assisted surgery, has made our surgery a lot safer. That will eventually give way to robotic surgery in the future. Well, navigation surgery, per se, has been around for a long time. It's been used in brain surgery uh, for a number of years, and we've adapted it now for spinal surgery. And in particular, actually, we needed it in scoliosis surgery. The spine can be really quite curved and the anatomy can be quite abnormal. Essentially, what we need to do is to be able to put screws into the spine in a safe way, avoiding the spinal cord. We always consent patients for a potential risk of neurological injury and we're trying to cut down that risk to as little as possible. In very basic terms, we actually scan a patient who's going to have surgery on the operative table. That scan then works as a template for us and every instrument that we use after that has markers on them that can be seen by a camera and they guide the usage of all of these instruments so that we can avoid the very precious structure which is the spinal cord. It really means that we can do much safer surgery and we can also rely on the screws we put in to be able to get a very good correction of the spine. We've learned from other specialities that an enhanced recovery program, which is a protocol-driven program, aids the recovery of patients. One of the most important aspects of that is patient education. The patient needs to know what type of surgery they're going to have, how that's going to feel, what's going to happen to them in the recovery period, and how they're going to rehabilitate after that. We as surgeons need to make small gains for the patient to get them a better recovery, but also outcome long term. That may mean doing a muscle splitting and therefore preserving approach to them rather than a muscle cutting approach. It may mean decreasing their blood loss during the operative phase, or it may mean that they actually they have computer assisted surgery or in the future possibly robotic surgery. All of these aspects will actually decrease the insult to the patient and potentially lead to a better outcome for them in the longer term. Small gains make a big difference to the recovery and decrease the need for second or actually revision surgery. Music